We're live, folks. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to share that slide, Lauren, just start it off with that. Right. Yeah, bring up some slides. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to 2021. Hello. We, we've started off with a bang, haven't we? We, we <laughs> thought we'd get through. Man, that was the wrong choice of words, wasn't it? We thought we'd get through 2020 and have a have a new fresh outlook for the year, and instead we uh, we have what we're going through these days. So it's wonderful to see you all, as it were. My name is Paul O'Brien. I'm joined by the wonderful Lauren Postler, Ted Cohen, and John Cesaro, who are going to start to, to introduce you to what we have been developing for startups and with founders and mentors and investors in media tech ventures. I'd love to share just a few thoughts about what we're doing, what that looks like, and what it serves before I turn it over to everyone else. And before we introduce a couple of our, our fantastic guests this evening, we're only going to take about an hour of our, your time to, to introduce to you our passion for the media industry, and in particular, why we're doing this kind of work with you and for you and, and on behalf of our ecosystem. Last year is a great example of that. We saw the explosion of the need for things like Zoom. If you're a gamer, we know how big things like Fortnite uh, have become. The media industry is really a, the predominant consideration of our economy. The internet 10, 20 years ago, the internet completely transformed the way we do business. And nowhere is that more true than in our news industry, in gaming, in the way we do advertising, and in the way we produce films, the way we produce and create music, and the way we monetize all of that. And it's taken that 10 or, 10 or 20 years for many of these economies to catch up to how that has been so transformative, to the fact that if you are a founder, if you are an entrepreneur, really in any field these days, let alone in the media space, Understanding how these things work is critical. Last year, like I said, that became clearly evident for the entire world. We're now all connected. We're now on social media. Here we sit on StreamYard, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, sharing our experiences with you. These technologies are not going to go away. This is how we do business now. This is how startups grow now. And if we don't continue to work together to solve the problems that exist in this ecosystem, in this economy, we will continue to exacerbate the kind of things that we've been experiencing for the last few months. For example, why is fake news such a substantial issue? Why don't we have transparency to news? Why don't we have accountability in news? Why are so many musicians struggling to make money, even though it's not hard to produce music on something like YouTube? Why and what do we do about the fact that our film theaters, our movie theaters, are likely not going to survive to a great extent, certainly not in the way that they have existed for the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Right? This, this coronavirus, this quarantine has created a set of circumstances in which a lot of traditional media will continue to suffer and struggle. There is an endless list of opportunities as things like blockchain artificial intelligence and other innovations continue to impact what we're doing in our economy, these sectors of media are going to evolve even more. What we've been doing in MediaTek Ventures for the better part of five years, specifically as a focus, but collectively for far more than that, is working on the fact that these innovations need mentors, these innovations need investors. The startups in this space need a guided, structured curriculum that focuses on specifically what we do in these kind of industries. I keep referring to them and pointing to them subtly. So let me wrap just by touching on the kind of focus that we want to have on behalf of what you do. Media refers to many different things. In many parts of the world, how you define media depends on that region of the world and your experience with it. For example, when we say media in a place like New York City, people tend to think of advertising or news. And indeed, that is media. That's what media dominates in that part of the world. Amongst our friends, for example, Ted, who's joined us amongst our friends in Southern California is another example. When we say media, people tend to think it means entertainment. People tend to think we're referring to film. And music. Now, why is that? Because media actually refers to our senses. Media refers to any form of experience in which people can see, hear, and engage with what we're doing. 
And so it's media technology. It's the innovation that we're all developing, that you're developing, that we want to help you develop. It's that innovation that transforms how we all hear stories, engage with news, entertain ourselves, and frankly, work remotely and communicate and educate each other remotely. That certainly includes more innovative things like augmented reality and visual reality. It touches on certainly not only music, which I've mentioned, but sound and audio in general. That absolutely includes film. Think of it just in the context of film and video. All film is digital now anyway. Publishing blends with advertising. Whether you're blogging, publishing books, or thinking about ad platforms that are meaningful to those formats, that's media. This microphone right here draws from our experiences in developing the radio industry. And as many of us are trying to podcast, notionally, they're the same thing. How do we better podcast, produce radio, and broadcast what it is that we're talking about to the world? How do we address the news industry and not just the news industry, which is media, but also PR, public relations and media relations? There are jobs there are programs, there are platforms that, me that are meaningful to that sector. And then if you haven't heard, if you're not aware, the video game industry, as of last year, dwarfs every other form of media and entertainment. The video game industry is, in fact, our largest form of media, will continue to be so. And given some of the headlines we've seen in the venture capital we've seen just in the last few weeks, we're already off to 2021 being a year of unicorns as far as the video game and media industry is concerned. We'd look forward to working with you and would love to see you join us in the very near future to work more formally on what it is that you're doing and can be doing with all of us. Very well said, good sir. Uh, appreciate appreciate the intro. Um, and I think that's a, a very common misunderstanding. Um, and I'm, I'm seeing some, some people already starting to ask questions, which is great. Feel free to ask questions, folks, and we will address them uh, as, as, they, as they come. Um, as far as the four individuals that you see here, we are the directors of uh, Collective. We help manage and run it and the founders of the program. And so what I would like to do actually uh, is introduce um, uh, Lauren, who is our newest member and uh, managing director of Collective. Talk a little bit about herself, her background, um, and then over over to Mr. Cohen uh, to talk a little bit about himself and what he's seen kind of over the years of, of his experience and where things are headed. Thanks, John. And we're looking forward to including some alumni of our program and mentors as well later on. So this is going to be a very well-rounded presentation, not just about us and our team, but about the experience of people who have participated and been active. Uh, as John and Paul mentioned, my name is Lauren Postler. And I'm really thrilled to be a part of this badass team of innovators. But I'll share, my background is not in media, is not in entertainment. I don't even know how to win at Mario Brothers. But <laughs> I am passionate about scaling social impact. I am passionate about working with founders, startup entrepreneurs, freelancers and creatives to help them achieve their dreams and build the lives that they want to live. And that includes how their products, their services, their companies make an impact in our world. So with Collective, that's inclusive of educational programming, community development, collaborations and collective impact, really focusing on how do we uplift, empower and support you as founders of media tech companies. And that is my background. I'm privileged to teach at uh, Rice University, the University of Houston Wolf Center for Entrepreneurship, which is still number one in uh, entrepreneur programming in the country for undergrads, the University of Texas as well. But my goal is to support you in your growth and in your journey. And so in order to do that, we rely on experts. Experts in media, in technology, in entertainment, in marketing, in finance, in business, in investment. So I'm one of a very large team. And, you know, I think no one embodies expertise in the industry better than my good friend Ted Cohen, 
whose black book could probably launch a thousand ships. But <laughs> when we think about the level of expertise that our mentors, our teachers, and our partners bring to the collective experience, I think TED is a prime example. Our goal through the program is to connect you with the best and the brightest and the best connected in the industries where you are seeking to work. So Ted, I, I'm small beans compared to you, my friend. Thanks very much, Lauren. It's great to be here. Um, see a few people that we know popping up in the comments. So hi to Dick Wingate, who I've known since 1974. Um, this is my 40th year in digital media. We started at uh, Warner Records working with Atari um, on what the possibilities might be when the personal computer uh, took root. And so we've been chasing the front of the experience ever since. Um, went through uh, CD-ROM um, explosion in the 80s and 90s, and then the web in the late 90s ended up uh, at uh, EMI basically proposing that we cease being a record company and start being a recorded media company. And uh, myself at EMI, and as I said, Dick and some of the other people that I see here, uh, we're getting stabbed by our bosses for suggesting that we stop selling shiny silver discs or <laughs> black vinyl or whatever and start look at, looking at uh, media as a service. Um, People over the years that uh, were left out of the room were uh, people like uh, Reed Hastings that I met when he launched Netflix. Uh, we worked Amazon on launching the music store. And at, at each inflection, there's a certain resistance to letting go, to uh, moving on to the next thing and giving up whatever was the mainstay. Um, I think I can say with some confidence that streaming media, digital media, whether it's film, television, music, documentaries, uh, anything you want at your fingertips uh, is now the way we enjoy media. Uh, I'll also say that I have this thing, we don't consume media because nothing, I don't think comes out the other end, but we do experience it. We do enjoy it. And I mean, last night, uh, as an example, we started out watching Fran Lebowitz and Martin Scorsese talk about living in New York currently, uh, a show called uh, 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 Think of It as a, no, Think of It as a City, but something pretend it's a city. Um, and then ended up watching a five part mini series on a uh, thief in, in Paris. Everything's at your fingertips now. We're in the attention economy, we're in the delivering media uh, business. How do you get people's attention? How do you build a product that is compelling? Because it's not about distribution anymore. It's not about shelf space. It's about mind share. And uh, what we do through the collective is help you create companies that can, can grab mind share and, and realize your vision. I love it, Ted. And you know, I can keep going for another half an hour. So I was looking, I was going to take a breath and let you jump back in and stop me. I, I saw that coming. John is our, our, you know, fearless, not necessarily peerless, but our fearless leader. Why don't you tell people about yourself as well? So my uh, journey is a little bit more uh, unconventional in that I was a professional, I'm a recovering professional musician. Uh, so um, I did that for, for over a decade. And it, from there, really, really turned to the to the marketing side of things, uh, based off of, of, of what I learned from that industry, um, and you know, I think a lot a lot of similarities that I've noticed from from being a musician to then going and, and being a serial entrepreneur is they're very similar, and I think that's what a lot of artists tend to forget a lot of times is being a musician, being a painter, being you know, a, 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 you know, work working in, in fine arts, whatever it is you are an entrepreneur at the end of the day. And the similarities between both of those is uh, uh, very similar. And it, throughout my experience, what I've, what I've noticed is there's a lot of um, opportunities to educate the artists on how 
this technology actually works, right? I mean, back in the day as, a, as an artist, you didn't have to show up and know how the internet worked. You didn't have to show up and know how marketing worked and, and advertising and publishing and, and distribution and all these things. And, and uh, you know, you, were, you, got to, you got to do what you love. But unfortunately in the 21st century digital economy, uh, you really do need to understand how these things work. And it is imperative to learn how these things work. And so that's kind of where, where Paul and I, when we first linked up, really saw a lot of opportunity, especially uh, being in Central Texas and Austin, uh, that there was just a lot of um, opportunity to teach these musicians, to teach these artists on how this stuff actually works and how it can benefit them, right? I mean, I, I, honestly, if you think about it, if you were to find 20,000 people from all over the world who actually really cared about what you were doing and, and they were you know more than fans right they were they were purchasing your your products and things you were putting out that on average is fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year right um in in living wages and you know that's something that you can do without leaving your home uh, and so you know it's it's there's just a a lot of a lot of cross between the two and so what what I'm really excited about is really trying to help demystify um, across the board what media actually is, uh, because the, the challenge that some of you may or may not know is when you look at from how media is actually categorized um, from from NAICS codes, there's a lot of gaps and there's a lot of opportunities to really understand from a federal level how these people are indexed and, and what that means and, and how they're professionals. And then when you ask an Accenture or you ask a Deloitte or you ask a, a Bain Capital or Google what media is, they, they're all of their responses and answers are going to be wildly different too. And, and that's an issue, right? There's no cohesiveness and consistency between definitions. And I think we really need to start there and, and really educating everybody on what that looks like. Um, and, you know, really, really happy to be here. Really happy to, you know, we're, we're approaching our fourth cohort um, in collective and uh, really excited to introduce you uh, shortly here to uh, one, of, one of our teachers and mentors and, and also one of our um, graduates, one of our students. Um, and you know, keep in mind anybody that's developing in media can qualify for this program, right? I, I saw a, a gentleman asked, you know, I'm working on developing a digital signage and digital out of home media. Any word on that side of media innovation? Well, yeah, I mean, you're 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 developing media and you're innovating in media, and it's digital signage. So let's have a conversation, right? We are very product focused, right? So if you are developing a services organization, we're not a good fit for you, unfortunately. Um, we try to really. Uh, uh, um, cover a lot of the venture capital interests and, and corporate interests when it comes to innovation. So we're, we're very product and technology focused. So you do need to be product and tech focused in order to uh, get into the program. Uh, but other than that, I mean, you know, that's, that's really all you need. <laughs> um, and, you know, we are early stage. It's an, it's important to appreciate there are diff big differences between a commercialization program or an incubator or an accelerator or, or a, as, a, as Bob Metcalf once said, a, a whateverator. Um, and uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget that. That was, that was a really good speech you gave. Um, and uh, so incubator is early stage. It's, it's pre-seed organizations, right? So you are either just beginning or you have a prototype and you're trying to figure out how it works. Those are, that's the stage of organizations that we look for. Um, if you're beyond that, doesn't mean we can't help you. We've had had um, some of our students were a little bit later stage than that, but not too later beyond that because everybody does need to be at a, a very similar place in their growth cycle in order to get the most out of the program. Um, hey, and there's the question uh, <laughs> that I answered. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, it's interesting that Hussein, 10 years ago, digital signage was just developing. It was was it the McDonald's and Burger King weren't physically having signage rotate in a, in a McDonald's to go from the breakfast menu to the lunch dinner menu and digital signage came along and it was mystifying to a lot of people. Uh, There's a company out of Israel called YCD in New York that was doing a lot of the like AMC movie theaters, etc. Now the basic core technology to create digital signage is pretty much out there. Again, what do you you have to look at what are you going to do to make yourself different, easier to use, more nimble? What is what you know, what are, what's in your bag of tricks that's going to get you the account over 30 other competitors? It used to be a very narrow field, crowded field. Still there's room for a lot of innovation, 
but it's in the service offering, not necessarily in the technology. Correct. Okay, and let me jump in for just a minute. Paul, I want to give you a chance to introduce yourself as well, because you jumped right into, you know, what I did jump right in. Paul actually showed up fully formed. <laughs> you know why? He didn't have a childhood. <laughs> So, so, the, so the reason I jumped in is actually somewhat related to my relevant background. I I did radio a little bit in college, yep. and so I'm I'm used to just being on the air and and, and you just talk, you just go, uh, or 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 so as some of you know, I write a lot, I, I blog a lot, I I I have a, a, a I mean thousands, literally thousands of articles about venture capital and startups and, and so forth. Then I do social media, so I'm always. I'm always in these these environments where you don't introduce yourself. You just you just go. <laughs> there may be someone out there, Paul, who does not know you. Maybe. I didn't presume. I didn't presume that. I just I just figured, hi everybody, here we go. Right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that one. Uh, uh, so here, here here's my passion. I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm middle aged. I, I grew up in Michigan. Uh, uh, nor Northern United States. For those of you uh, in the rest of the world, I grew up in Michigan, and and the economy then was was struggling. This was still pre-internet. Uh, I I put together my f first computer, built my first computer. Uh, so that you know that time frame, and uh, and I was I was really big into to uh, bulletin boards and and you know all the cool stuff that was kind of kind of emerging at that point. But but I had no intention of being a software engineer or actually going into computing, and so. Uh, I, I instead found myself uh, in in Arizona at Arizona State University. Uh, go Devils! And uh, and and at that time, technology education was was really still IT. It was still just computer science, right? The the, the internet hadn't hadn't gotten any massive adoption yet. They, there was really nothing to teach. Nothing had transformed yet. Uh, Yahoo was around, uh, and some of the early stuff. AOL was certainly around. That kind of thing. And so I, I found myself this this introverted kid at a at a party school, uh, who would who would of course party, uh, and and then and then to to recover from that, I I taught myself how to build websites, and uh, my my first kind of real job was that I built some of the websites for for ASU when I was in school. Well, one of those one of those websites got the attention of a, a small band out of out of the UK by the name of uh, the Beatles. And uh, and I got I got an email from George Martin uh, when I was twenty I don't know twenty years old maybe, and uh, you know imagine that it, that just blew my well some of you can imagine it because appreciate that back then none of us were connected no nobody was on the internet unless you really intentionally wanted to be <laughs> and and there were really no such things as websites you, you maybe you used you Yahoo to find something so so my mind was just blown because I I had no aspirations with this thing I was just writing some stuff about music and suddenly I get an email and, and I had no concept. I had no grasp of how I got it or, or how he found it or, or how it arrived, you know, at, at my doorstep, so to speak. So when I graduated, Yahoo called. Uh, and, and at that point, uh, Yahoo was like going to work for clubhouse today, I guess. What's, what's the next hot <laughs> one for us, right? <laughs> Yahoo called. And I, I looked at my girlfriend and said, I, it's, it's Yahoo. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going sure to ask Elijah. I, I'd love you to come with me, but yeah, I'm going. <laughs> so who's on the phone? Short. Some Yahoo, right? Yeah, it's a long story short. <laughs> few few years at Yahoo. So I, I like I said, I'm that Yahoo. I'm that advertising guy. I'm that social media guy in 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 uh, a lot of the experience that we have. Uh, I'm a lot of the the internet stuff with regard to the news business, uh, and uh, then then did quite a few startup things with the venture capital ecosystem in. in Northern California before I found myself in Austin, Texas, uh, where where most of us uh, still call home and and are continuing to welcome all of the things that are moving to this part of the world. So uh, that's I suppose me in a nutshell. Well, and I love that this really highlights I think the diversity of experiences and schools of thought that our team leadership and then also our mentors will get to meet Elijah in, in a bit bring to the table. You know, it's not often that you get the ear of someone like Ted Cohen or someone that made a website for the Beatles and worked for Yahoo. Uh, Paul was also at Sequoia Capital. So he has, you know, deep experience in fundraising. He and I are both passionate about fundraising. John is, you know, one of the broadest generalists that I know. He's also one of the quickest minds. So I talk fast. I'm sorry. He's got it. <laughs> and 
I'll say that's the kind of energy and enthusiasm that we bring to the collective team and environment. So, you know, John, you were jumping into a little bit more about collective. Uh, let's back up a little bit and, and talk kind of umbrella. Media Tech Ventures is the umbrella and holding company. Collective is our, you know, arm for educational programming in the incubator. And, you know, we mentioned the whateverators. Not everyone knows what the hell an incubator is. So, you know, which, which one of you lovely gentlemen wants to talk Media Tech Ventures, the role of collective, and then, you know, what the fuck do we do? Sure. And then, uh, and then let's say, uh, let's, we'll, we'll bring in uh, Elijah and, and, and Alana to, um, after that. I, so, you know, there's, there's many stages to an organization. There's many stages of capital. So it's important to appreciate that there's a lot of programs out there to support you upon your entrepreneurial journey. If you so choose to seek out those uh, types of, of programs. And, and, and again, uh, uh, you know, it was really kind of uh, institutions and colleges and the healthcare industry that really kind of revolutionized this whole idea of incubators and right. Cause I mean, it's a billion dollars to launch a, a new medicine, but uh, fast forward, right. Incubators are uh, uh, popping up left and right all over the place. Um, and, and so an incubator is very early stage, right. You have an idea, it's from ideation to incorporation, um, you know, usually within some sort of a structured curriculum, um, which is exactly what we have, 12 week program. And by the end of the program, you are in incorporated uh, Delaware C Corp and you are on your way to scale your business. And uh, so that's, that is pre seed stage from a capital consideration. So that's family, friends round, right? That's figuring it out. That's getting, you know, all of the um, right people on your team, finding, you know, your, your founders and your team as well. And you're going to start on your path to, you know, becoming a, a, a growing organization. And, you know, our, our incubator in particular, and I can't speak for all of them, but we really focus on getting you to be able to get anybody excited about you, what you do within 60 seconds upon graduation, because it doesn't matter if they're an investor, it doesn't matter if they're a potential client, a potential partner, um, somebody at a gas station, uh, you should be able to get anybody excited about what it is that you're working on after you graduate our program. And if you can't, uh, then, you know, we, we screwed up, uh, and, uh, we failed you. Um, but I guarantee you will be able to do that by the time you graduate. And then, you know, from our program, you would look at a, a program like a tech stars as an example, right? Which is an accelerator. So traditionally in the accelerator models, what they do is they invest actually in the organizations and anywhere from a hundred thousand to actually quarter million dollars I've seen in some programs. And, and obviously they get a stake of the organization and doing that as well. But then the team actually goes uh, to that where, where wherever that program is going to be hosted and they're on site, right? For six months, uh, traditionally on average. And accelerators are really designed to help you scale uh, on a very aggressive global level, right? So now you're, you're you know, anywhere between 500,000 to a million in ARR. Um, <clears throat> you are looking for growth capital or you've already obtained some growth capital and you're, you're racing towards either a series A or, or potentially series B, um, depending on where you're at and, and, and obviously how you define a series A or a series B round. And so again, so we have all of these growth cycles and then you have things obviously like commercialization programs in, in universities and in other types of um, innovation programs, but incubators and accelerators is, is the, in the field in which we operate. Um, and that's where, um, we can, we can really, uh, help make a difference for you. Uh, <laughs> shout out, shout out to my dad really quick. <laughs> hey, pops. <laughs> What are the odds that somebody has the same name? Yeah, what are the odds, right? Yeah. <laughs> what are the odds? Uh, so how does collective help a company develop an idea or technology to an offering that can be sold? So can I uh, on real quick so, as an addendum oh, huh? to that question, because I love that question. I also, between you and Paul, really want to talk about our key differentiator in our curriculum. But that's an addendum to that question from Joe. Sure. So I, a lot of these programs, uh, for, for better or for worse, uh, call it what you will, it, everybody's got a different idea on, on, on what works and what doesn't. Uh, a lot of them tend to focus on, in, our, in, in my opinion anyway, in our opinion, based off of our proprietary curriculum, because everything is, is, has been designed purposefully and meaningfully in the way that we believe it should be. They focus on you know, your business plan or your idea and, and putting together projections and, and how these things um, you know, need to... Uh, uh, come together in order to then go find customers and clients and then, and then marketing and, and, and development. When in reality, 
let's face it, uh, you, you probably should have talked to about 100 people but before you even started uh, going down a path of developing anything. Yes. <laughs> Um, Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, you know, being being a, a media and marketing focused and driven, uh, that's where we begin. We begin with marketing. Uh, we begin with really validating your idea uh, in the marketplace and, and get rid of any assumptions before you even start going down a path. Right. And because at the end of the day, what you don't want to do is you don't want to develop something and then go find a problem for it. Right. You want to continue to iterate upon the problem that you're obsessed with solving uh, with your solution. And that's going to continue to grow. Um, that, come, and, that comes up a lot. Companies over the years have come to me with a solution in search of a problem or they're the only person exactly. that feels they need that solution and enjoy. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, on, I, I, on the, I mean, but on the other hand, um, Mark Cuban wanted to listen to Indiana basketball games when he was traveling and he built broadcast.com and sold it for $3 billion. So that was, <laughs> that was a solution in search of a problem, but people didn't realize it was a problem that could they be had, solved. Uh, they had the problem. <laughs> right. That's they, right. But once it was pointed out, it was great. I was going to say the one thing I enjoy about the collective the last couple of years is that, uh, you know, some, some incubators are based on, you know, you know, sort of a uh, uh, a lightning round Harvard Business School. Uh, we're a little bit more, and correct me if I, if I'm couching this wrong. We're a little more Fight Club in yeah. terms of, you know, sometimes yeah. in the interest of getting people on track. The wow, that's an interesting idea, but uh, you know, you might. It's no, no, no. Stop. <laughs> Start that over again. <laughs> it's maybe a little bit less decorum, but a lot more valuable information. Yes. And at the end of it, we end up, I just got off the phone with one of our graduates a few minutes ago, Jesse, who, um, and I hear from, you know, half a dozen of the people that were in the last cohort where you have a dialogue with them where it's not uh, mentors and teachers and students, but it's, it's colleagues now. And so it's not, it doesn't end a graduate. It doesn't end when the cohort ends. And that's what I found really wonderful about this. That's, that's really been my passion for it, Ted, to touch Lauren again on, on your questions. A, a little Don't bit touch about Lauren. The distinction, <laughs> the distinction is, is, you know, as John shared one, uh, a, a curriculum designed for, for media oriented startups in particular. And, and so, you know, some examples of that are, are the fact that if you're a media oriented company, you, you can rest assured, you better understand and know how, the rest of the media works, right? <laughs> that, that you're, you're going to have to know how to how, how to how to be podcasting, how to be writing things, how the press works. Uh, that that in the in the media business, there's this notion in the media startup business, there's this notion that the the time to development, the life cycle of startups is actually a lot shorter. You got a lot shorter shorter window to to get things off the ground. Why? Because all of our competition as it were, our community in the startup ecosystem, they're all very aggressively racing at media too, right? They're all getting attention. They're all on podcasts. We're all on, and that's a good thing. And so we want to make sure you understand all that stuff to a much greater extent than you might in a lot of other programs. So one, the, the, the curriculum is different, but what Ted was just touching on is what I'm really excited about and passionate about. And that's, that's that we, we're, we're a bunch of folks that are going to, going, going to be doing this for the next 60 years. Uh, that, that, this is our industry. This is our love. This, this is what you do. You know, we're, this is not just let's get a startup off the ground and teach you how a startup works. This is let's all of us build a community and an ecosystem of, of founders and mentors and advisors and even investors. And, and so, you know, as, as you progress through the program, if you find that you need to shift gears, if you find that you maybe want to try something else, or if, or if you just want to go through the program and then start something else. <laughs> we're, we're still on your team. We're still working on all of this stuff together because in, in 10 years, after you get through this startup, you're probably going to do something still in this industry, in this space. You're not likely to go be a doctor. You're not likely to go be, to be, you know, in the banking industry, right? We're, we're all musicians and filmmakers and gamers and bloggers and podcasters, and we always will be, right? So, that those two things really distinguish why and what we're doing. That that there's something to the idea behind an incubator and, and or an accelerator. Frankly, being very sector specific. All of our mentors know this industry. All of the investors in the business 
are aware of what we're doing and aware of what you guys are doing as you come through what we're working on. All of them want to get involved and hear what's going on. All of us are cross-promoting things and supporting things together. This really is a community. It's really a collaborative effort to address all of the world's challenges as far as the media industry is concerned. And whether you solve it or we solve it or we solve it together or somebody else in the program solves it, we're, we're all continuing to work on behalf of each other to make that easier for all of us so that we can all be successful and have that impact that matters. Paul, before we let you and, and Ted go and really appreciate your time tonight, you guys are super busy, so thanks for carving it out. We did have a question about terminology that we've used tonight, uh, like Series A and Seed Round, and I want to state kind of broadly, this is terminology related to startups and fundraising. And, you know, Paul, I would say you have prolific writing on this topic. So if you want to direct people to some resources that you've shared, if they're interested in learning more about some of the basics, uh, you know, Paul and Ted, tell people where to find you if they want to learn more about you. And then, you know, we'll get to our mentor and our alumni. Yeah, you bet. Real quickly, and I'll hand it over to you, Ted, next. I, 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 I Like I said, I love to write about venture capital and startups in general. Uh, and and I, I actually very passionately believe one of the reasons we, we built this incubator, I very passionately believe that the knowledge, the information should be public access. We should all have an understanding of how this stuff works, that, that these programs are designed to do it together, right? To work together. Uh, and so, yes, we, we, we certainly teach it all uh, in the program, but uh, I think what was referred to as the stages, right? I mean, that, that simply, that kind of refers to, uh, are you, do, do you have funding yet or not? Uh, how much funding do you have, right? We, we classify those as different stages. The other word we're using is incubator. And we've kind of explained that a little bit, but we, we use the word incubator on purpose, right? We're, we're that very early stage before you're ready to accelerate something. We want to help incubate. You're, you're a little egg. You've got a little egg. I have an idea. We want to help nurture that and grow. Great way to put it. So easiest way to easiest way to find me is is S E O'Brien, S E and then my last name O'Brien. Uh, I used to do a lot of search stuff. If you look that up, you'll find me all over the place on the internet. Uh, and then I also do a lot of the Texas startup stuff since I'm based here. So if you're part of the Texas ecosystem in particular, or if you're one of the millions of people it seems that's suddenly passionate about doing a startup or moving to Texas, uh, I'm I'm one of those people that would love to talk to you about that and 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 can connect with you on a lot of the Texas ecosystem and, and how things work here. So that's me in a nutshell. Ted the thing that I just want to say one closing thing before we jump to Elijah. We have a great complimentary skill set and this is sort of humorous but serious. Paul likes to write. I like to talk. Lauren likes to plan. John likes to organize. And between all of it, we lean on our skill sets for, you know, putting together something that I, that I find much more fascinating than when it was, when it was laid out to me a couple of years ago, John heard me speak in Belgium three years, two hours. And don't want to talk to me. So, um, and it's, it's grown and, um, the proof is in the pudding. The people that, that have gone through the collective so far, um, as again, they, they remain colleagues and we remain uh, resources for them. And it, it's when they leave the nest, it's, it's interesting watching them either, either morph in a different direction or continue to go the way they're going. So uh, who's going to take us to Elijah now? How do we do this? All right, gentlemen, I'm going to, I'm going to see you guys out. Thank you very much. Thanks so okay. much. Feel free to stick in the chat room if you want though. <laughs> Up to you. And I'll clarify for everyone, if you're looking to learn more about, you know, as Paul mentioned, his prolific writing, if you want to connect with him or with Ted, join our Media Tech group on Facebook. We have an active, growing, and engaged group. Just search for Media Tech in groups. And then Paul and I uh, help to lead the startup community in Texas. So we're both in the Texas startup group. I'm helping in Houston and in Austin. He's in Austin. So get in touch. We are all very active on social media. We'd love to talk to you. Look for us on LinkedIn as well. Um, and, and so really quick before we get into these two wonderful people that have joined us this evening, um, this is a fantastic question. And yes, we will absolutely reach out to everybody that does apply and we'll have more information on that. An email from me. If you applied, if you didn't, reach out to me, please. All right. Well, without further ado, Mr. Elijah May needs no introduction. One of one of the big guys in, in Central Texas. I'm pretty sure he's three bourbons deep. 
So <laughs> we, know, we know that he's ripe for the picking. Um, you know, thank you for joining us this evening, good sir. No, oh, no, thank you. And uh, you know, this was empty when we started, but you talked for so long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I'm, uh, I'm actually disappointed now. I, I you know, I, I figured it'd be a little emptier, but that, that's okay. Well, you, no, I, I mean, I, I killed the last one. I had to start again. <laughs> so, um, it's uh, it's a bit embarrassing. I'll be honest. How many empty whiskey and, and scotch bottles I have uh, here at the house? Because I'm the only one here who drinks it. So uh, but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, let's just put it all out there. Uh, no, and, and, and in all truth, you know, I'm I'm delighted to be here. I will say, I was I was a little bit. Uh, I had a moment when Paul said, you know, all of our mentors and everyone here is an, an expert in media. I'm like, ooh, am I an expert in media? Uh, and then I reflected on the fact that, you know, I spent the first eight years of my life working in Hollywood uh, and moved to Austin. I became, uh, you know, I, I taught social media. I spent two years traveling and teaching social media. Uh, the only reason I didn't call myself a social social media expert was because I hated all the people who called themselves social media experts. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I have been fascinated by this transformation by watching, um, you know, I mean, Ted really hit the nail on the head. We talked about digital signage, you know, a few years ago was, look, oh, my God, like the people at McDonald's don't have to physically turn the sign around. And now you have like tigers leaping out of buildings, you know, in some of the videos, it's absolutely crazy what they can do with projection mapping. Now it looks real. And um, it is it is a crazy time to be alive uh, in both good ways and bad ways. We all know that. <laughs> Uh, but um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and, uh, you know, to, especially with such an awesome graduate. Um, I remember, um, you know, sweet success, the presentation. I remember the first time and uh, I love the idea then, and I love the idea now. So I can't wait to see where it's come. But, uh, <laughs> so, Eliza, you have served as a mentor and you're also, you know, a, a partner for us here at Media Tech Ventures. We work together on Funded House and other projects. So there's a deep relationship there. Um, you know, Falana is one of our alumni, which we're very excited that you could join us, Falana. Mm -hmm. I like it. You know, tell us what it's like being a mentor. You know, you said that you're, and I'll say this. I think there's a tendency for most of us, if we're not complete egomaniacs, to, you know, hesitate a bit when someone says, oh, aren't you an expert? There's kind of an the imposter syndrome there, but you have a deep wealth of experience. And you have the, you know, privilege, I would say, of sharing that with these people who are up and coming. So talk to us about being a mentor and being a teacher and sharing your knowledge and experience. Well, you are in luck because I am a complete egomaniac. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, uh, my favorite definition of, of expert is somebody who's made all the mistakes you could make in a very narrow category. Yes. And by that definition, I am most certainly uh, an expert in the area probably of, of experiential marketing. Um, it's it's evolved in interesting ways, but you know, I, I was speaking to a group at Texas State yesterday, and this is something that I'm absolutely adamant about. I don't understand why 90% of business classes aren't customer experience. Like I fundamentally don't understand how that really? isn't the only thing we're talking about, right? Yeah. So yeah. the number one question I hear VC say that makes me want to punch them in the face, like the number one question is, well, what if Google decides to do this? Which is like, <laughs> we all forgot about Google Wave. Like, okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> Waze came along. Like, Waze built an app that is, we already had Apple Maps, we already had Google Maps, and then Waze came along and just fundamentally made the customer experience of driving a car better, right? Because who likes traffic? Uh, zero humans, zero people <laughs> like traffic. And they're like, well, wouldn't it be better if you could get where you're going faster and also not get speeding tickets on the way? Then people were like, shut up. Like, it, what's interesting is like, they have no business model per se, but man, are people adopting the heck out of the technology and when there were already huge, huge players in the space. And to me, that says everything you need, you need to say. Um, I'm grateful to the collective for the opportunity to go in and talk about what to me is the most obvious and yet non obvious thing in the world, which is that anybody, any organization at any level has the opportunity to go and do something extraordinary, specifically in terms of the customer experience. Yeah. You know, and so the presentation that they've let me give a couple of times, which I really, really enjoy giving, is coming in and talking about, you know, three things that, that everybody can pretty much agree suck and are boring. And then talk about three companies. Because we all agreed on that, I think. What was that like? <laughs> we just got a comment from a Facebook user that more VCs should be punched in the face more often. Yes. 
Well, yeah, no, I mean, that's we should do that at Funded House. I think we should make that a thing. Um, yeah. I will buy the VCs to volunteer. Um, I think that. Uh, so I come in, I, you know, the class, you know, as, as a mentor, the I specifically give these three examples of a carpet cleaning company, a parking garage, and a direct mail example that all weren't just good. Like, people fell in love with them. Like, a parking garage where people get married. Like, a, a, a carpet cleaning company where I saw someone stop the CEO at a restaurant and be like, oh, my God, we love your company. And they didn't know he was the CEO. They just saw him wearing the logo. Like, I, I still can't wrap my head around the idea that someone saw somebody wearing, saw, wearing a carpet cleaning T-shirt and stopped them in public to be like, oh, my God, we love your company. Right? <laughs> and then I was there with him at the time. And then, you know, and then like a direct mail example of, you know, they get people spend all this money like, oh, we'll get someone to tweet cool things. It's the dumbest thing in the world. But somebody went and just figured out who their target market was in a direct mail campaign and end up with something like 19 million social media impressions, like legit. Like people actually acted on this campaign because they just figured out who the right folks were and went and created something for them. So every time I get a chance to come talk to, you know, to the collective, that's what I talk about is like, I don't care who you are or what you're doing. I promise you there's a way to do it that people will fall all over themselves. For. And, uh, you know, I, I have to say, like, I love the idea. You know, Paul talked about how media is anything that we <laughs> what did Ted say. We don't yep. consume it, but we, we enjoy it. <laughs> so, enjoy, yeah. um, let's, let's speak in my language. The fact that you have all these folks who are, you know, at the end of the day, it's just about connecting with other human beings. And the fact that there's an incubator out there focused on how we help connect with human beings more effectively is kind of everything to me. And it's, um, you know, I don't want to get you know too sappy about it, but I love, I really genuinely love having the opportunity to be part of it and meet amazing folks like Falana. So. Well, and, and before we turn it over to Falana, I will get a little bit sappy in that, the reason that I joined this team, besides the fact that we're a bunch of metalheads and you know crazy, <laughs> people, is that I have a deep passion for that collective human experience. And when I think about media, again, I'm not an entertainment person, but I'm a writer and I'm an educator. And education mm -hmm. today is about how you share information, audio, visual, graphics. So essentially, mm -hmm. any technology that uses media is media tech. And, you know, Falana, sweet success, I think is one of those wonderful examples that people might, you know, not think, oh, well, that's an AR or a video game company, but you are a perfect fit. And I have heard just wonderful, wonderful feedback from your fellow cohort members, from the mentors and teachers. So, Falana, really glad to have you here with us today. Mm -hmm. Tell us about you and about sweet success and, you know, your experience going through Collective working on that collective human experience and how y'all are contributing. Hi everyone, my name is Falana. You can call me Alana. Um, I started Sweet Success Magazine after being a baker for many years. Um, my formal training and education is communication. So I studied writing, PR, all of everything that we're doing. Like I do that as well, like just in my free time. Um, but as, as a baker, when I was getting started, I actually got started as a kid, but when I started baking um, as a business, there was like Entrepreneur Magazine and Forbes and, and all of these things geared towards big business, but there wasn't anything for small business really. Entrepreneur was kind of on the cusp of small business as well, but it still, it still didn't even really fit. And so I just had to piecemeal together my business education. And this was maybe 10 years before I even thought about going to grad school. And, and that's essentially how Sweet Success Magazine came about. Um, just after essentially retiring from the industry and just hanging out in Facebook groups. And you'll see that in my pitch if I ever pitch <laughs> to you. But essentially everyone, meaning everyone in the cake groups, talk about how do they get their business started. That's probably the number one topic. How do I price my cakes? How do I, how do I get in with wedding planners? Um, this bride came to me and said this, I don't know what to say back. So they just, they're, they're just yep. talking about business and, and they don't really have a way to navigate it. 
And that's essentially how I came up with Sweet Success Magazine. It's trademarked. I'm so excited. So no one can steal it. <laughs> um, nice. So yeah, that's, that's essentially what it is. And my parent company is is Sweet Success Media. So it's it's a media company. The magazine is my core product. Um, obviously, we, we've all have had to pivot this past year. So, so um, I launched my online school, Sweet Success Academy, and I teach online courses. And those are all pre-recorded on my cell phone. I use Canva for my pictures <laughs> and I upload it to Teachable. And oh. that's essentially <laughs> that's essentially the business. And then I also have I have a copy right here that I had the print magazine um, as well. So I would go to like cake shows. So if you guys have watched Food Network at all, which I'm sure you guys have, you've seen the cake competitions. Well, those competitions are actually done at trade shows. So there's um, a whole cake show circuit, which obviously got shut down um, with essentially the special events industry and you know, the whole world. Um, so I would, I would teach those classes at the cake shows. So that's how I pivoted my company um, this year. I just launched my online school much sooner than I had initially planned. Um, <laughs> I just launched I an online school. No big deal. Yeah. No big deal. You know, yeah. <laughs> With a cell phone in Canva. <laughs> I I, this is the perfect example. <laughs> that you're an entrepreneur who said, you know, this is a need. No one's doing it. I can solve this. Mm -hmm. And you determined that, you know, hey, I have an idea, but I need help to bring it to life. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm, I'm a writer. I'm an educator. So this is my jam. You were figuring out how do I educate the masses? Mm -hmm. How do I connect with my audience? How, how do I understand who my audience is? Tell us about working with Collective and yeah. how this, you know, worked for you. So I did come in um, a little bit farther along than my other counterparts. So I, I've been working on this for about maybe three years, but I, I just didn't know how to pitch. I didn't know the investment side. I did not know anything aside from Shark Tank. Um, I was like, oh, Mr. Wonderful's gonna hate my product. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's essentially all that I really knew about investing. And so that's really why I joined the collective was to learn that side and to really learn how to pitch and craft a pitch and what to say in my pitch. And um, John, or remember like my first pitch, I froze. My second pitch, I froze. <laughs> so like I just stood there <laughs> like for the whole minute and didn't really say much. And then towards the end, I was able to just nail it in, in about 60 seconds. But that's really why I joined. So it, it it helps me. It helps me work through the nerves. So it was like Toastmasters in a sense, but it, it helps me craft that message and get it succinct. So when I am ready to um, talk to investors and all of that, I, I know what to say. Well, you know, we only have a few minutes left, and John, I do want to talk a little bit about you know some of the basics, the twelve week curriculum, you know, all of that good stuff. But Elijah and Kalana. If people are interested in connecting with you and maybe learning more about your experience as a mentor and teacher and as an alumni, and um, if you're active in our media tech group on Facebook, we'd love to direct you in your way. But where else can they find you? And Solana, tell people where to find your business, girl. Yes. Um, so my LinkedIn is my first name on the screen, Flana Thomas. Um, so you can connect on LinkedIn. And my business is sweetsuccessmedia.com. Yeah. I was going to say something similar, you know, um, I, I pride myself more than I should on being Googleable. So uh, <laughs> very available on LinkedIn. Um, if, if, if you reach out to me on LinkedIn and your profile is not like we generate leads three times, like then I will probably accept your request. Right? The <laughs> generate leads. I don't care. I'm not interested. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just, you know, LinkedIn.com slash in slash Elijah May. Uh, if you Google me, it'll, it'll pop right up. You know, I, I, I did that when I had a horrible job. I Googled myself out of sheer boredom. I'm like, hey, why don't I show up here? And uh, I spent some time on, on fixing that problem. But, um, you know, I love everything Falana said about or you, being able to go and just use these tools that are available. Like, that's the crazy thing about it is that, you know, entrepreneurship is certainly not new. Um, and I don't know, honestly, like I talk about it a lot, but I, when I teach college classes, I talk about kind of behavioral economics. 
But <clears throat> the fact that we have the tools that we have now to be able to take our ideas to market and develop in the way that Fulana has, I mean, you have this incredible magazine and then all of these sort of associated products. This stuff is there, it's available for the taking. I just think most people don't know that. And that's what I love about the collective is that it's, it's you got the, the people, the, you got the people organizing it. You got all of these different guest mentors. And like, by the way, every single guest mentor was way more impressive than I am. And like I said, I am an egomaniac, but I was blown away by the people who, who came in and presented uh, before and after me. And just by being in that space, you get access, you, you learn about all of these tools that are at your disposal as an entrepreneur that people don't realize are there that make life so much easier. Yes. Well, Elijah, Falana, thank you both so much for joining us. You know, love you both. And I know that you've given a great, you know, kind of high level overview. I want to share a couple of, you know, basics with people and John, you, you can answer questions. The curriculum is 12 weeks and it's an intensive course. We're currently doing it uh, in three hour sessions. So once a week, three hour sessions. We may look at, you know, breaking that up a bit, but on in needs, but 12 week intensive curriculum. The cost is $750, but if you do have an economic hardship, we do not want that to, you know, deter you. We are actively sourcing scholarship funds. There are payment options available. And, you know, John, let me turn it over to you and Paul to also talk a little bit more about kind of the basics. Yeah, you wanna to go to the uh, next slide, pour for Jor. Uh, we had a couple of questions I wanna address really quick before we do that. Um, one of them was um, international, um, as far as do we work with, uh, let me find it, let me find it. Yes, there it is, Felix. Do you have any specific take regarding emerging markets such as Latin America, right? Um, it, so we do have international programs. We're currently um, uh, program a record for Italy, for, for Colombia. We're in the works and in, in the talks with South Korea as well. And these programs are actually designed a little bit differently in that uh, the focus really is to uh, grow and expand um, organizations from those countries into the United States, into the U.S. market. Um, so it's not so much launching a company as much as it is expanding into the U.S. marketplace. On top of that, uh, we did have another question. Um, have we had any international cohort members? Yes, we have actually. Virtual Travelers um, was out of Finland <laughs> and she actually flew in when we can actually all sneeze in the same room together to uh, participate in, in Austin when we could actually have class in person. But now, given the circumstances, you could be anywhere in the world and still participate in the program. Uh, so some of the FAQs that we, we get, it is a 12 week program. Uh, we do meet once a week for about four hours. And obviously there's, you can schedule meetings and office hours and, and, and other things like that throughout the program. Uh, looking forward to connecting with you as well, David. Thanks for joining us. Um, and it, the fee, as is, is Lauren talked about, is 750 bucks, which covers the, the course curriculum and materials. Uh, right, a lot, a lot, everything that we have developed for this is proprietary, and that is that goes for the homework and and, and all of the resources and, and all the fun stuff there. Um, and four uh, percent of the company in warrants. And uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar, perhaps with what a warrant is, uh, the easiest way to think about it is a warrant's kind of an IOU, and uh, that warrant uh, actually becomes equitable for us uh, in our holding corporation upon a merger acquisition. Um, and happening, if you will. So we get to exercise that option um, with the warrants that we receive. So until then, right, you, you kind of have free reign of what's going on. Um, so it, and it, is, it is virtual, we meet weekly. The time commitment, it is a lot of work. I don't want to underplay the the amount of work that is required here. Um, to, But again, it's it, to be successful in, in anything that you do, it, it does require a lot of work. So um, be prepared to, do a lot of work and because the people that put the most in this program get the most out of it. And it was something that Ted touched on earlier and it's, it's absolutely true. And to be honest, those that put the most in to what they do and what they love get the most out of it anyway. So it goes without saying, I would hope that we expect you to show up and to roll up your sleeves and, and to get shit done 
right? And and I'm I'm not your dad, so I'm not going <laughs> over your shoulder. And I am. Sure you're doing your work, and you know, and and uh, uh, so uh, you know, again, it's it's we can only help you be as successful as you want to be. Uh, what happens if I miss a class? It's okay. We're a media focused incubator. <laughs> so, uh, we record everything and it is in your resources folder. Uh, you know, there's no, um, it's not kind of, a, it's not a pass fail thing. So, you know, it's, it's, it is, you, you paid for the program, you show up and, and we're going to continue to move those that want to move forward. And, and those that don't, don't. And that's, that's just how it is. Uh, it's, it really is that black and white folks. Uh, you know, I don't want to put, put too much emphasis on that in particular. Can I make one, one short comment? Yeah. Um, the, the main thing that comes up both in uh, our consulting work and in the classes, you really need to take a look at who else is in your vertical, both currently and historically. What's come before? Because chances are, with a few exceptions, no matter what you've come up with, somebody else has tried a version of it before. So why didn't it work then? Are they still, is it, you know, was it because bandwidth wasn't there? There wasn't enough story, whatever, whatever the issues were and who's currently in your space and why you're going to do a better job at what you're doing than they're doing. You don't necessarily have to be first, but you have to be really good and you have to be, you really have to stand, you have to be outstanding. And Ted, I, I think that that helps to kind of encapsulate why we focus so much on market research, why that is the primary you know, differentiator between our program and others that we lean so heavily on that to validate your idea and why you're the best one to execute it. Uh, Paul, I would say, are there other kind of closing thoughts that you have about the program or want to share with people or should we direct them to where to find us? To join us in any event would be the hopefully the, the the passion that that we're all driving home that you're doing this work anyway and it shouldn't be so difficult doing it on your own it and it doesn't need to be so difficult doing it on your own if you just join us to 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 go through some content to to ask some questions to 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 get on our our experience, our community at, at Media Tech Ventures, please do that. Uh, this program is is our passion for for everything we're all doing in innovation, and as entrepreneurs, and we'd love to work with you directly and help you. But in any event, we're all in the same space. Let's let's make that space impactful and meaningful to everybody. Thanks, Lauren. Gentlemen, thank it's, you. It's always a pleasure joining it on the screen with you all. As we mentioned, my name is Lauren Postler. I'm the Managing Director. So my email is up on your screen. If you're interested in learning about, more about the program, connect with me on LinkedIn, shoot me an email, smoke signals, text, you name it, and join our Media Tech group on Facebook. Thanks, y'all. Good night. Thanks, everybody. See you out there.